Pay per view was what a segue that was. <laughs> Would you rather be circumcised or watch this pay per view again? Uh, pay per view was <laughs> largely boring and uh, completely rendered completely irrelevant by Raw the next night later. So this review may get angry here. Hold on, I got one more thing to say. Under uh, circumcision funding cuts hurt. There's a like button on Facebook. Click it. I'm sure this has been mentioned before many times, but uh, that like button is so weird because there's always, when you go through your news feed, I've got uh, a lot of friends, and so I've got a giant news feed, and inevitably in there, somebody's had a bad day. You know what I mean? Yes. Like somebody, you know, their their dog is sick, or, or like in my case, my cat is sick, or, you know, something, but they broke their arm, or whatever. And invariably, like, eight of their friends hit the like button right. every time. Or someone will put up a link to, like, a, yes, bus goes off-road, 18 die, so-and-so likes this. Bob likes this! Yes. Oh, goodness. All right, go on. So we had our pay-per-view. It opened with Miz and Truth showing up in the front row with tickets. They were immediately ejected. Christian versus Sheamus. The highlight here was Jim Ross, who was trying with all his heart to drag good commentary out of Michael Cole and Booker T and, and instill a logic in the booking. Uh, Cole was talking about how Hunter had been punishing Christian by making him wrestle uh, Randy Orton and, and John Cena and Sheamus here, and Jim Ross said, well, I don't see how this is punishment. He's putting him in main events to make big money. And later, it, uh, a while into the match, Sheamus made a cover, and he didn't hook the leg, and Christian cooked out. Booker called this a lackadaisical cover, and Ross cut him off and said, no, it's not lackadaisical. He's tired from all this. Uh, he's exhausted from all the work he's doing in this grueling match, you see, trying to get the talent over. Yeah, Booker had a bad night here. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He did a cool spot where Christian hit a spear on the floor. He tried to win by countout, and Sheamus just beat the count back in the ring, got up, and immediately ate, ate another spear for an earfall. They countered finishers for a while, and then Sheamus won clean with a broad kick. It was a, a good match, but no better than we get on SmackDown. Well, I, I wrote every week, but I had not watched this week's SmackDown yet. So I will say most weeks. And in hindsight, perhaps the best match on the show. The opener? I don't think so. It was... Anyway, we had a Mark Henry promo. <laughs> I wrote down, he tells Stryker to shut up. I'm sure he said more, but it probably didn't get any better than that. Then we had the Battle of the Sin Caras. I've seen worse. I actually, honest to God, thought it would be worse. Really? I mean, there was part of me that thought, okay. Well, here's the deal. Like, I've seen Sin Cara botch a million spots, and I've seen the fake Sin Cara botch spots. And so there was a part of me that thought, oh, my God, these two guys live? Be, this will just be a complete disaster. But there was the other part of me that kind of thought, okay, well, hold on a second. Usually I see Sin Cara, uh, either one of them, uh, mostly the, the Mystico Sin Cara, uh, I, I see the original botching spots because he's a he's a luchador working with Americans who don't know lucha style. So of course shit's gonna get botched. But at least the other uh, Sin Cara was actually a legit luchador. So so theoretically these two guys should be able to do a lucha match together. Right. As as it turns out, it was just right in the middle. They botched some shit. Some shit looked good. It ended up being fine. No, maybe a little less than fine. It was not a disaster, Vinny. It was not the worst match I ever saw. To call this anything other than a failure would be a mistake. I don't know if I'd call it a failure. The only good thing about this is that they had a... Sin Cara came out, he got the Sin Cara entrance we've all seen, and then fake Sin Cara came out, he has his black gear, and they produced an evil version of his music. Instead of, like, uh, chanting and, 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 and choir singing, there is moaning and wailing in the background. That is awesome. So, they did... They did some cool lucha, and it was cool lucha, but the crowd did not care. And the gimmick was they would do a lucha high spot and then do a standoff because, you know, they were equals and mirror images. And uh, the more they did this, the less into it the crowd got. After all these, uh, after the, all, all these uh, uh, face-offs I had just talked about, fake Sin Cara goes to a chin lock. Booker says he may be winded. <laughs> they had done to this point, you know, one minute of actual wrestling and three minutes of the match. Did more lucha. There was no well, heat. Well, you know, in real life, I mean, if you if you if you are getting a little winded, then it would make sense to put a man in a chin lock and and bear your weight down upon him. Yes, and but, then you rest a little and you make him carry your weight. 
sure if this was eight minutes in. This was this is very early in the match. Well, and they, to say he was winded is just to say this man is out of shape. They were moving at a fast pace. They were sprinting. When they moved, there were also lots of breaks. So, there was no heat except the boring chant. I uh, I was stunned when these men showed up on Raw. I figured fake Sin Cara for sure would be canned, and I would not have been surprised if real Sin Cara was canned. The announcers were bored. They were just fucking with each other with nothing better to do. The highlight of this was when Booker described, I think it was a kick, and he said, there's a kick to the masked area. And Cole said, wouldn't that just be the head? <laughs> I did like the masked area line. <laughs> Sin Cara finally hit a Luta roll into a code red. I went star and three quarter, and that seems very generous. That's what I back. gave it. Yeah. That's fine. That's slightly below average. Otunga met with Punk. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Air Boom versus Swagger and Ziggler. This also, as I wrote here, largely formulaic, not bad, nothing special. Evan made his comeback. It was pretty cool. The heels cut him off and tried a super bomb, but Evan turned it into a Hurricane Rana, and he pinned Swagger as Kofi grabbed Dolph. Two and a half stars. Oh, God, this was better than the opener. I thought this was a, a, uh, a fine wrestling match. Slightly better than the opener. A quarter star better than the opener. All right. I'm not going to argue that point. I had I had it a quarter star lower, so I'm not going to argue this. Orton versus Henry and Helena Cell. They did a spot, and we talk all the time about how you know they they, they claim these stairs where like the stairs weigh like 300 pounds. These guys are throwing them over, the, are lifting the chair, the stairs. I, what the hell is wrong with me? They exaggerate the weight of the stairs. <laughs> so Henry grabs the stairs and he throws them. Like a baseball. Just launches them at Randy Orton. And uh, Orton ran, ran away and he stares at the cage. But had Orton not dodged away, this would have been bad news. That was a dangerous spot to do right there. I do like how uh, this is not just you. But we seem to be constantly amazed at Mark Henry's strength. Why? The we, man's strong, everybody. Just because... We should not continually be surprised that he is he ha, he exhibits great strength. This was uh, I'm not trying to make a comment on his strength with that part. Mm. Others, uh, there may be some later. In fact, there will be when we get to the raw report, or maybe it was a uh, the hell was it? There was a point where he picked up Kali and carried him around the ring. That must have been on SmackDown. That would have been the great Kali match. That would have been it. That makes more sense. Anywho, he did a bunch of power spots here. He did a running power slam. Slam. He threw Orton into the fence. He set up for a world's strongest slam on the stairs, but Orton grabbed the cage to escape and turned it into a DDT. That was a cool spot. And uh, they got back in the ring. They did some stuff. Orton hits the RKO. The crowd goes crazy. And Mark Henry kicked out. Yay! So Orton had a crisis of confidence. He didn't know what else to do. He went to set up for the punt of doom. But as he ran across the ring, Henry grabbed him. He hit the world's strongest slam. As soon as he hit this move... Five grown men! uh, Let me cut you off. As soon as he hit the move, you you went, yay! Yes, I did. I was still skeptical. Actually, I went, yay! I, I was uh, not convinced. I was fearing that Randy Orton would kick out. But the ref counted one, the ref counted two, the ref counted three, and then five grown men went, yay! Mm-hmm. Yes, so... It was what it was. Randy Orton, or Mark, well, both of them, but especially Mark Henry is not the best wrestler in the world, but he does what he does perfectly fine. Nah, he's the best wrestler in the world. I'm just convinced now. Has the belt to prove it. He does. He's yeah. the champion. So, Mark Henry then went to, uh, he grabbed a chair, he went to pilmonize Orton, Orton's leg. Orton dodged, hit him with a bunch of chair shots to the back up the aisle. Mark Henry ran away. Because you see... They did the Hell in a Cell match in the middle of the feud. Because it's just time to do Hell in a Cell, goddammit. Actually, it I think that might not. have been the uh, blow-off. Not based on what happened on the Raw the next night. I don't, Based on what Mark Henry said, yes. Well, yeah, and then uh, now he's threatening to beat up uh, the big show. Listen, Vengeance, and particularly the uh, Survivor Series with The Rock, you don't need uh, Randy Orton challenging for the title on those two shows, particularly Hell in a Cell. I don't know what they got planned for Vengeance. But it's just like the uh, the Royal Rumble every year, where everybody's paying for the Royal Rumble, so you can have dorks fighting for the title underneath. Bob Hawley versus Brock Lesnar, for example. So... 
Survivor Series for sure, you got to do Mark Henry and the Big Show because they ain't selling one ticket because every single person is buying the show for The Rock. So presumably, I think they're going to start with that match at uh, Vengeance. Do Big Show, Mark Henry, uh, fuck finish, and then Big Show, Mark Henry, you get at Survivor Series, and then uh, Orton can make his big return and win the title at uh, in December at the Royal Rumble or something. All right, we'll talk about more about this on Raw. Had an Alberto Del Rio promo. He said tonight we would see a sign of him we did not know existed and that he would win. Cody came out. He said the people who refuse to wear his paper bags should be, and this is a quote, everyone, figuratively euthanized. He didn't want to be too mean. He didn't actually want them to be killed, just figuratively killed. What does that even mean? I don't know. I just... He, I, and he said in the voice, figuratively euthanized. Yeah. What? So then things got awesome. He said, just like this belt. Now, this Intercontinental title has been around since, like, The Rock in, I don't know, 98, 97, somewhere around there. It's not as cool as the belt Shawn Michaels had, and I've always thought that. It's uh, just that we've had the John Cena belt to hate more. I like how you, you kind of mentioned that like you're the only one who thought that. Everyone in the world thought that belt was better. Uh, see, I didn't, I believe you. I didn't know it. I, 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 I'm the only person I've ever heard complain about this belt. Maybe I've just missed it. Hmm. But Well, I, no one complains about this belt, but I think if you polled like, every wrestling fan over the age of 30, mm -hmm. they would all tell you that the original, uh, the mid-90s Intercontinental Championship yes. was far and away superior to this shitty one. All right. I'll, I'll buy that. And I, I also think the Cena belt has uh, kind of distracted from yes. how horrible this one is. That is a god-awful, horrifyingly disgusting and atrocious belt. It's appalling. So, back to Cody Rhodes. He held up the the uh, title he's been wearing. Said, uh, basically, he put it in a garbage tra trash and pulled out what I, I was expecting, a new belt. And I thought it would be something really stupid with, like, his own face on it or something. But no! It was the old Intercontinental belt with the white leather and everything. Yeah. This is the best pay-per-view moment of 2011. He said this belt was held by Ricky Steamboat and Bret Hart and Randy Savage and Steve Austin. In honor of those men, he said he would wear this classic belt, but he would wear it with more pride and dignity than any of them. And he put on his glorious, glorious new championship title. He vowed to defend it feverishly against any man, any time, any place. So Johnny Ace came out, interrupted him, and he announced Cody would defend that title right now against John Morrison. So we had Cody versus Morrison. Booker at one point in this match uh, claimed that John Morrison had arrived in the at the building in his wrestling pants. So they had an average... Like that guy on Urban Wrestling. Oh, right. Remember the man that stripped down because he walked around in his gear all the time? In the Speedos, yes. Sure. So they had a pretty average match. I like uh, Cody on the outside, hugging the ring post and begging the referee to count him out. That was funny. Eventually he cut Morrison off and he pinned him with a roll up because John Morrison is a loser who only loses Hunter was upset about something on the phone then he learned that uh, Air Boom had been beaten up by Miz and Truth security laid Miz and Truth away Alex Riley and Ezekiel Jackson ran in very concerned Beth wrestled Kelly Beth beat her up for a long time it was not as exciting as it sounds just beat her and beat her and beat her and beat her forever. Wow, that sounded exciting. Yeah. Kelly made a wacky comeback. She hit a... Speaking of one-man gang, she hit a 747. It was not the finish. So Natalia started beating up Eve. Beth uh, put... Beth put Kelly in her... Or what happened was Eve ran over to attack Natalia for no good reason. And she got her ass kicked as a result. Which is always a great way to put over the baby phases. Yeah. So they tried to do the same spot they did on SmackDown where uh, Beth put her in a hold and, and put Kelly in a hold and Natalia taunted her on the microphone and uh, it led to Natalia bonking Kelly with a mic. Beth hit the bitch clamp and after losing 97 matches in a row on her 98th try, she won the title and we're supposed to care. She cared. I guess so. This is where Booker said, why is she crying? Because <laughs> she won the belt, homie. I guess so. And she's proud. A fucking... Great promo for Vengeance, where they took the uh, they took uh, Jules' speech from Pulp Fiction, rewrote it slightly, and had Mark Henry recite it. 
You will know my name is Mark Henry when I lay my vengeance upon me. Fucking money. That was awesome. So we had the main event. Cena versus Del Rio versus Punk. First it was two on one baby faces against the one heel. Eventually Cena and Punk started wrestling each other. The crowd liked Punk more. It was pretty boring for the most part. I like the part where uh, Cena disappeared for a while, so we had a chin lock here in this three-way main event title match. Then John Cena interfered. He uh, uh, came off the top rope and he hit both men. First, he tried to pin Del Rio. Del Rio. Del Rio kicked out, so Cena turned around and tried to pin CM Punk after a chin lock. Well, he put his weight on him. Punk kicked out. Mm. So, the uh, cage door got unlocked. Cena found himself outside, and then Del Rio got a hold of the key, relocked the cage with Cena outside, and threw the key away. At this point, the match got better. Shocking, I know. We had uh, a, a beaten CM Punk fighting valiantly against Alberto Del Rio, who had a steel pipe. And he did his best, but God damn it, this man had a pipe. And he beat him and beat him and beat him, and finally pinned him to win the title. They raised the cage. Cena, Miz, and Truth... All dove in at pretty much at the same time, and they lowered the cage, and Miz and Truth destroyed everyone with pipes. They beat up all the wrestlers, they beat up the referees, they beat up the cameramen. The uh, whole roster ran down to shake the cage and, and try to get in. It didn't work. After a uh, good three four minutes of this, they brought bolt cutters out. They uh, uh, cut the chain that was holding the, the door closed. Miz and Truth surrendered to police. They were led away. Hunter showed up out of nowhere to attack them as they were handcuffed. And uh, that was that. And it was a good angle, but I'm getting kind of sick of paying for a pay-per-view that feels like the middle part of a chapter, not the finish. That's every pay-per-view except WrestleMania. I guess so. It's every show. I mean, you got to have a cliffhanger. I suppose. I mean, we we got a new champion. We got a finish. We did get a finish. Yeah, it could have been worse. And, and, and under the circumstances, it, it's hell in a cell. There are no rules. I would consider this a clean finish. It was a clean finish. All right. There's a, he had a pipe, and Punk tried to give him the, uh, whatever they call it, GTS, and got piped. Sucks to be him. Let's play a uh, quick song here, and then we'll uh, get into Raw. 